Welcome to Tales from SYL Ranch, where everyone is entitled to my opinion, and I'm Bill Stone. As a Gen Xer who spent my entire career building the modern internet, I've started to wonder if what we got with the internet was worth it. On the one hand, building the internet is by far my greatest professional achievement. On the other hand, I am horrified by how its promise has been utterly perverted. When I started this journey in the 1980s, all I could really think about was the promise of what the internet could bring. A worldwide communications medium that would ultimately replace everything that we had. A worldwide platform of free speech whose barrier to entry was negligible. A business to business communications medium that would replace everything that we had. A way to start up a business and to find a market that would otherwise be totally unavailable. A way for people of similar interests to communicate, particularly non-mainstream, uh, which for me at that time, an interest like science fiction. And I could go on pretty indefinitely, we got all that. However, we also got side effects that we didn't foresee. If we had, we'd have done things very differently and built in safeguards. When we started building the internet, there were thousands of ISPs and millions of web service providers. Today, there are only a dozen or so major ISPs and a similar number of web service providers. What that happened was the initial corporations started bribing, sorry, giving campaign contributions to government officials so as to benefit themselves and crowd out the competition. And then they bought out the competition for a song. But when we started, if you wanted to say something, you could do it inside a simple HTML page and no one anywhere ever imagined taking it down or censoring it. But today, Alphabet, Google, Facebook, and Twitter have a near stranglehold on individual communications. You can't say anything that isn't approved of by Alphabet, Google, Facebook, and Twitter. And if it's not approved, say like on my show, the only way that you can get away with it is because your viewership is too small to matter. When we started, no one in government had the slightest conception of what the internet was and they couldn't regulate it. Today, government unconstitutionally regulates the internet the way it does every other industry and with the same effect. It favors certain businesses over others, depending on who hounds out the largest bribes. I'm sorry, campaign contributions. When we started, it was virtually impossible to monitor individuals. The traffic was too dispersed among too many ISPs and web service providers. Putting monitoring equipment into all of them was just impossible. But today, mega corporations like Alphabet, Google, Apple, and Amazon monitor us 24-7-365 via our phones and other connected devices. And most people are totally unaware that everything they say near a computer, a phone, an Alexa, or a similar device is monitored. They're unaware that their computer or other device, their cameras are constantly watching. And your computer or other device may appear to be off, but it may not be. The only way to truly be sure if it's off is if the battery is 100% drained or if the battery's been removed. In fact, I put tape over my computer's cam when I'm not using it, and so should you. We also got an NSA that records everything that we say and do. What it does is it gets this via equipment that's inside what we in the industry call NSA cages, and they're located inside what few ISPs and mega corporations data centers there are. It sends all information going in and out of those data centers to its own data, data center, nicknamed Bumblehive, and that's at Camp Williams near Bluffdale, Utah. Now, while this facility is very classified, my colleagues estimate that from its power consumption, that there is enough storage to hold two terabytes of data for every single human being on Earth, and that capacity is constantly growing. Now, none of this data by anyone is actively monitored. It's stored and then used what's for what's called data mining. And that means that the NSA, Alphabet, Google, Al Apple, Amazon, etc., can do ad hoc reporting. That is, if the NSA or somebody else wants to know about you, well, it can find out everything about you at any time. If it wants to know about me, it just asks for information about Bill Stone and it all gets pulled back. And it's not just the public things either, like Facebook posts or tweets. It's the recordings of every single one of your phone calls, every website you've ever visited, every email that you've ever sent, and anything else that it's 
humanly possible to gather. And all of this are stored by any of the companies that, they, that possibly can, and every single byte of it is stored at Bumblehive. What the NSA does is unconstitutional, illegal, and immoral. They routinely lie to oversight committees. And unfortunately, these committees are filled with attorneys who know nothing about IT, and so it's very easy to snow them. And similarly, the tech companies. Their testimony before the House or Senate is utterly laughable because the attorneys in government don't even know the right questions to ask. And then there are the health issues that the Internet has created. We have systemic obesity in the U.S. because no one goes outside anymore from cradle to grave. We have an epidemic of type 2 diabetes for the exact same reason. We have very bad, bad socialization because no one interacts with anyone in person anymore. Our social media just encourages nothing but rudeness at best because lacking a face, you can say anything that you want. Where you used to have to worry about hurting somebody's feelings or just getting punched in the face, well, now you can say anything with impunity. And the internet created the civil war that now looms. Every last insane idea that has ever popped up in the last 20 years is a direct result of unfettered communication among tiny groups that should have little to no impact on anything. And so here, after 40 years and in my retirement, I have to ask myself a simple question. Was what we got with the internet worth it? The answer is, I still don't know. Ask me again after the Civil War when we know how many people have died. It may well be that that war itself negates any positive benefit of the Internet. As I say, on the one hand, building the Internet is by far my greatest professional achievement. And on the other hand, I am horrified by how its promise has been utterly perverted. And that's all I have to say about that. I would love to keep the conversation going, so please leave your comments, questions, and nasty remarks. I'll do my best to respond to you. So thanks for watching. That's all the time that we have today on this episode of Tales from SYL Ranch, where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing, the control and manipulation of minds.